Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Art Tree Goes Almost Live. I'm Miss Lisa and today we're going to be doing part three of my series on color. Two weeks ago we looked at the primary colors yellow, red, and blue. Last week we looked at the secondary colors violet, orange, and green. Today we are going to talk about the complementary colors and in particular the combination of blue and orange which happens to be my favorite complementary pair. So let's just look at the color wheel again and talk about what we already know. We know that yellow, red, and blue are primary colors which means we cannot mix them from other colors on the color wheel. We need to start with these three colors and then we can mix a lot of other colors. Three of the colors that we can mix are called secondary colors. We put a little S next to the secondary colors. If we mix yellow and blue, we get green. If we mix blue and red, we get violet. If we mix red and yellow, we get orange. So that's how we get our secondary colors. Now something else that's really interesting to me, and I hope it will become interesting to you as well, is that the colors that are across from each other on the color wheel are super interesting. These are called complements. So for example, if I look at the primary color yellow, and I want to know what is its complement, I just go to my color wheel and I go straight across the color wheel and I find out that violet is the complementary color of yellow. And likewise, yellow is the complementary color of violet. If I look at red and I want to know what is the complementary color of red, I look across the color wheel and I see that green is the complement of red and likewise red is the complement of green. So these are called complementary pairs. These are called complementary pairs. Red orange, which is a tertiary color, is a complementary color to blue green. Okay, and these tertiary colors we talked about when we made the color wheel. There are six of them, but we're not going to go into any more detail um, today with these tertiary colors. Instead, we're going to look at one complementary pair in particular, which is the blue-orange pair. So the orange is a complementary color of blue, and likewise, blue is the complementary color of orange. This is a complementary pair. And with this pair of colors, we are going to paint a painting of a sunset in Hawaii so here we have the sun setting over the ocean. We have a beach, we have some rocks, and we have palm trees. And we are going to do this whole painting with only orange and blue and colors that can be mixed from orange and blue. So let's see what we need to do this today. We will need a piece of paper for your painting. We will also need some tempera paints. And tempera paints are still water soluble. They're like watercolor paints, but thicker. We can think of them as thicker watercolor paints. And you may have used them in school. They're very popular in schools. Here we have our blue and our orange. And these are Crayola washable tempera paints. And I just put a small amount into each of these containers. And those are the colors that I'm going to be using today. I also have a piece of scrap paper inside a plastic protective sleeve. And I'm going to use this as my paint palette, meaning that I can put paints onto this and mix them up. This is my mixing space. For my, temper, uh, for my temper paints. And I could be using watercolor paints instead, 
But the reason I'm using tempera paints today is because they are thicker. And so when I mix up the combinations of paints, you're a little bit, uh, it's easier for you to see what colors they make because the thinner watercolor paints will allow the white from the paper to show through and that will make the color mixing a little bit less obvious because it'll be like orange, blue, and white. Blue, orange, and white. Whereas if I use the temper paints, you'll see the, the difference because you're going to be seeing the colors that orange and blue mixed together will make without the white of the paper showing through. I hope that makes sense to you. You will also need a good paintbrush. This is my favorite paintbrush. It is from the Crayola watercolor set. Fabulous paintbrush. This is the one I use in all of my painting demonstrations in the schools. You will also need two containers of water so that we can wash out our brush really well, um, the same way that we would be doing this if we were using watercolor paints. We would first wash in the container of clear water, tap onto a paper towel to see if there's any color left over, and then go into the clear water just to make sure, tap again. And the thing about tempera paints, because they are much thicker than watercolor paints, is oftentimes it's easier to wipe the brush gently with a paper towel instead when you're cleaning the brush or to do a little bit of water first and then just wipe the extra paint off your brush. And I will show you uh, with these pieces of paper towel when I'm uh, cleaning my brush in that manner. So I've got a little stack of paper towels here. I've got one paper towel to make sure that my paintbrush is clean. And I've got my color wheel just so that we could talk about the different colors again. I have my palette, I have my piece of paper. Now, if you want, you can also use a pencil to draw the scene, but let me just explain to you what we're going to be doing. I am not going to be using a pencil. I'm going to actually be painting the horizon line. This is the part when we look out over the ocean where it looks like the water is meeting the sky. This is the horizon line. I will just be painting that line, a nice horizontal line. And then I will be painting the sun, which is like a half circle as it sets behind, um, as it sets in the sky. And I will be painting clouds. I'm not drawing clouds. I'm using the white of the paper as clouds. So I'm thinning some tempera paint and then painting around these shapes that I'm going to be calling clouds, and I'll show you that as we go. I'm also going to be painting a little bit of sand down here and some rocks. And the palm trees are just long, slightly curved lines with little curved lines for the palm fronts and then more curved lines or straight lines, diagonal lines, coming off of the center part of the frond. So we'll get to that in a minute. But what I wanted to say is, for this, you might not need a pencil. If you do think you need a pencil, you can just very lightly draw a horizontal line with your pencil, a little half circle, maybe a little bit of sand down here, a couple little shapes for rocks, and a couple slightly curved lines, three. Let's put two on one side, one on the other, and a few more curved lines coming off of the top that are going to be the center of these palm branches. Okay? So let's get started. Before uh, we do the painting, I want to show you the amazing thing about complementary colors. If you mix the complementary pair together, you oftentimes get browns or dark grays. With a red and green combination, you can get something very close to black. But orange and blue are my favorite combination because they actually give us some good browns to use as well. 
And the other thing about complements is that when the two colors are next to each other in a painting, they really pull your attention to that part of the painting. So they're good for focusing attention in certain areas of your painting, and they're also really good for giving you these lovely browns and grays. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just laying out my oranges. I'm putting a lot of orange here, a little bit less orange here, a little bit less here, a little bit less here, until I've gotten I've got very little uh, orange at the end there. And then I'm going to rinse my brush. Tap it on the paper and you can see that there's still orange in my brush. I'm just going to gently pull the brush through the paper towel. And I know from experience that this orange is not going to come out in my blue just because I'm going to be touching my paintbrush lightly to my palette. And so all the extra blue is going to be the thing that's coming off. I'm just going to make a blob there and a blob here. And a little bit less here. And a little bit less here. And a little bit less here. And a tiny bit there. I'm just going to put some more here. And I'm going to rinse my brush. And now I'm going to put it also in the clear water because I want to make sure that it's pretty clean at this point. It's got a little bit of blue still. So I'm going to wipe any extra bit of blue off of my brush. And then what I'm going to do is mix these two colors together. A little bit of blue and lots of orange. And let's see what happens. So we get this kind of dull orange color. I'm going to wipe my brush. Rinse it. I should have really rinsed it in the other water. And now I'm going to mix these two together and let's see what happens. So I get sort of a light brown color, medium brown color. And I'm going to mix these together. I should get a slightly darker brown color. And this should give me even a darker color. And this last one is going to be a very dark blue, slightly dull dark blue. And I don't need to do anything to the, the blue alone or the orange alone. And now I'm just going to look at this. And what I'm trying to do here in the middle is get something that's kind of halfway between orange and blue. And to me, it's going more towards the blue. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more orange and mix that in. And now do you see how these two are similar? So now what I want to do is pick up a little bit more orange and put it into this one. And now you're probably seeing that these two are similar. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more orange and mix it into this one. And now what I've got, I've got orange, 
got dull orange, got light brown, got a medium brown. I've got this color, which is a very dark blue, bluey brown color. So I'm going to put a little bit more orange in there. It should be darker than this color, but not as dark as this one. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just going to put my tiny bit more orange in here. So let's see what we've done. We've got orange, we have dull orange, we have kind of a tan color, we've got a medium brown, we have a dark brown, we have a very dark blue, and we have blue. I'm going to rinse my brush really well now. What we're going to do is we are going to be thinning this paint down now. We're going to be thinning this color down with water to make a sandy color. So let's see what happens if we thin it down. Maybe a tiny bit of this color. So we get something that looks a bit like a sand color. And we're not actually going to be using off of the palette. I just wanted to show you what colors we have made. And then this medium brown might be a good color for painting rocks. And then this very dark brown, we are going to use this color for making the palm trees. And we have the orange for the sun, and we have the blue for the sky and the water. So we're going to move the palette, and let's come over to our paper, and we are going to clean off this brush really well, because we want our sky to be nice and blue, and we want the water to be nice and blue. And we want our paint to be kind of thinned down because this is very thick so I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to pull it into that blue. I'm going to pick up a little bit of clean water and put it into the blue, maybe a little bit more because I want this to be nice and drippy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting my sky, but I'm going to be painting around some shapes that are going to be clouds. So I can paint around. As I paint like this, the white areas that I leave are going to look like clouds in the sky. My brush has to be pretty wet to be able to do this. I need lots of water and a little bit of blue. And as I go further into, this is, a, you're seeing the clouds closer, right up above and then farther away, they'll appear to be smaller. I'm going to make those clouds smaller as I head towards the horizon line. So as I'm coming down towards the horizon line, my clouds are going to appear smaller. So I'll just make some small white areas of paper showing. And I'm painting with the side of my paintbrush, which allows me to paint faster because it's a larger surface than using the pointy tip of the brush. So when I paint with the side of my paintbrush, I can move the paint a lot faster. 
And then come down, down, down towards that horizon line. I want to leave a little bit of space in the center there for the orange. And then I'm going to take more paint, more of that blue, and I'm going to paint the horizon line. If it's easy for you, you can leave your paper horizontally and paint it. But I'm going to paint it. I'm going to turn my paper and paint it in this direction. I'm trying to get a nice straight line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue down the paper and I'm going to be making some water now. So we've done the sky, we've done the horizon line, and now I'm going to be leaving little, little white areas showing between these back and forth strokes. And those will be like the top of the waves or the shimmering water on the waves. And again, I want to leave a little bit of space in the middle there for the orange to be reflecting on the water. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is go into the orange. And I'm not going to put too much water in this orange. I want it to be fairly concentrated. And I'm going to paint that half a sun. And I'm going to put it right at the horizon line. So that paint is pretty thick. It's going to be very bright. I'm going to turn my paper right around so that I can get a straight line right here. Looks like the sun's sinking down over the ocean. And then I'm going to dilute that orange and I'm going to have the orange coming close to the sun but not actually touching it so that this strong orange will stay put. If I get too much water close by, it's going to pull the pigment out and I want to keep that area very bright. So I still have some orange in my brush. I'm just going to bring this color now near the half circle, but not actually touching it. I'll bring some of this color into the sky. I can put a little bit of orange in some of these clouds. And down here in the water, we'll get some orange reflecting in the water. So back and forth, back and forth. Then I'm just going to put a little bit up here on the underneath some of these white clouds. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush. So 
So let's take a look at our paint palette. We've used, oops, we've used the orange and the blue. And now I'm going to take this color and I'm going to dilute this color down to make a color for the sand. And I'm going to try not to spill my paint all over the table. So let me get my brush wet. I'm going to come over here. I don't know if you can see this. Yes, you should be able to. I'm going to pull some of this color down. And I want this to be fairly dilute. Pull a little bit of that tan color in too. Because I'm making the sand now. And I'm going to turn my paper again. And I'm going to pull some of the sandy color across the bottom of my painting. And if it goes into the blue, that's fine because it kind of looks like the sand showing through the, the bit of the water as it rolls up onto the beach. So now we have sand, we have the sunset, we have the orange from the sunset reflecting in the water, and also on those white clouds. And now I'm going to take some of this medium brown color I'm not going to dilute this too much because I'm going to be making rocks. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make some rocks here on the side. If you've ever been to Hawaii, there's these lovely beaches that are kind of rocky and then sandy at the same time. So there might be rocks and then sand in between and then more rocks probably like this elsewhere. I'm sure it's like that elsewhere in the world too. I'm most familiar with the beaches in Hawaii because that is where I would be going when I'm on vacation. My mother lives there and so I tend to go to Hawaii and I see those beaches more than I see other beaches in the world. Okay, so now we've got rocks, we've got sand, and we're going to make some palm trees. And to make the palm trees, we're going to be using this dark, dark brown. And I'm going to actually make some more of it because this color is drying out, and we will need a fair amount. I was already running out of the color for the painting the rocks. And because I'm not going to be using the orange again, I'm just going to scoop up some of that orange and mix it into the blue. And I'm trying to make more of the color that we have down here. And that looks pretty good. It's going to be darker than the color of the rocks, but not quite as dark as this dark blue. Let's just test that color. That's pretty blue, so we're going to pick up more orange and mix it in. We're looking for a dark, dark brown color. Almost black, and that looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint three palm trees. And basically we're going to be doing a straight and then curved line. Palm trees are very tall, as you know, and then they sort of curve over. So I'm going to put three palm trees in this painting, and I'm going to have them down here on the beach right in front of these rocks. So I'm just painting the trunk first. A nice tall palm tree. I'll put another one right, right here, I think. Maybe this one's a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to paint one over here up like this. Now at the top of the palm tree we're going to make the palm branches and we can do that by just start by pulling in lines like this.
And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start pulling down to get the shape of palm branches. And because my brush is pretty dry, you'll be able to see the brush strokes, which kind of look like the uh, palm branches. And so I'm going to use that as I make my palm branches. You can see because my brush is kind of dry, it makes all these lovely little lines. The bristles in my brush make these little lines that look like they are bits of a palm tree. So I'll just use that as I paint. And if you use a lot of water uh, when you paint, like if you were doing this in watercolor, you'll find that this is much harder to do because you won't be able to have this lovely thick paint and the slightly dry brush that will give you this palm tree effect. So see how fast I can do palm trees with a slightly dry brush and tempera paints. I'm just going to go back over the trunk of this palm tree here and of this palm tree here. And I think we're done. There we have it. A Hawaiian sunset painted with the complementary colors, orange and blue. And let me just review what we learned. If we take orange and blue and we mix them in different amounts. So if we start out with orange and mostly orange with a little bit of blue, we'll get this color that's similar to, it's a dull orange, but you could almost call it tan. If we put a tiny bit more blue with a lot of orange, we'll get more of a tan color. If we put a little bit more blue, we'll get something like a medium brown and we use that medium brown to do the rocks. If we made more blue in that mixture, you'll get an almost black color. And that color you can use to do your palm trees as the sun is setting. You'll not see so much of the green and the brown colors in the palm tree, but you'll see more of a uh, silhouette. That means you'll see the shape of the palm tree with less color showing. And at that point, as the sun setting in Hawaii or anywhere else, the palm trees can look almost black against the sky. And then, of course, if you go with even more blue, you'll get something that looks like a dull, dark blue, which could be really good for painting things like the night sky before it just goes completely black. You get that really dark, rich blue. And then, of course, if you don't put any orange in your mixture, you'll have the bright blue. So this is an example of using complementary colors. You've got your orange and blue pair here. There are other pairs. And we can go back to the color wheel and see that there are many complementary colors that you can play with. Whenever you have complementary colors next to each other in a painting, it really grabs your attention in those places and then as you mix those colors together, you can get some interesting effects that you can use to your advantage in your paintings. I love complementary colors. I love to mix colors, and I know that that's something 
that everybody loves to do. Mixing colors is just fascinating how you can get these colors from orange and blue. It just really, it's interesting. It's very interesting indeed. So I hope you enjoyed this little color mixing experiment. And next week we're going to do some more mixing. We're going to be talking about shades and tints. Those are really fun to work with too. We're going to be mixing white and black into different colors. And then we're going to paint an amazing imaginary garden. More of an abstract painting. The flowers aren't going to look exactly like flowers, but they are going to be the most beautiful colors. So until then, take care, stay inside, have a great time with your art, and be healthy, happy, and creative. Thank you, and goodbye.